So you're probably watching this video because maybe you just started your own YouTube channel or you just picked up a fancy expensive camera, but you're not quite getting the video image that you want. Well, today I'm gonna go over five mistakes that you're probably making with your camera. Three, two, one, action. Hi, my name is Tom, and if you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Okay, now back to the video. We all start somewhere, and videography in general can be very overwhelming. There's a lot of different settings, there's a lot of different gear, lighting, mics, all kinds of different things that factor into making a good video. So at first, it's very overwhelming. The first one that I want to start off with is really simple, but it's very important. And there's two ways that people misuse it or make mistakes with it. And that's shutter. The correct motion blur is very important, but you can also use it to your advantage. And we'll get to that in a second. That's the second part. For example, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you need to make sure that your shutter is twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24, you want to aim for a shutter of one over 50. That's as close as most mirrorless cameras can get, 1 over 50. Some people choose to go 1 over 60, but between 150 and 160 is a sweet spot. And likewise, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, your shutter is going to be 1 over 120, but most cameras will do 1 over 125 or so forth. But you always want to try to double as close as you can, whatever the frame rate is for your shutter. So why is this so important? Well, it's actually very complicated, but I'm going to try to simplify and just get straight to the point. It's in regards to the 180 degree rule. And long story short, it's considered the most cinematic because it's the closest to what your natural eye can see when it comes to motion blur. Too much blur gives this slow paced, drowsy effect and too little blur gives a very fast paced, almost anxiety effect. So you wanna make sure you're not overwhelming your audience unless it's intentional. Which brings me to the second mistake when it comes to motion blur and shutter, not using it to your advantage to get creative. Now in practical terms, Breaking Bad is a great example of using shutter or the 180 degree rule to your advantage. There's a lot of scenes in Breaking Bad where they have a really wide angle lens or a wide focal length and they'll have it right up to the character's face, the actor's face. They'll dial down the shutter or increase the motion blur and they'll give this effect where maybe the character's on drugs or they just woke up or they're drowsy or they have a hangover or whatever. There's a lot of scenes with Jesse Pinkman after he just woke up from a binge or whatever and he's trying to get to the door, Walter White's knocking, and you'll get this effect of him passing through everybody and opening the door. Likewise, in Hollywood, oftentimes with action scenes, you'll find that they'll increase the shutter speed or reduce the motion blur to give a very fast paced feeling. Maybe there's a huge fight scene and you'll find this a lot in karate movies or John Wick is a good example where they will give the audience a sense of something very fast, very dramatic is going on, slightly faster than your eye can perceive. So giving you this effect that the character is almost superhuman or at least they're doing something that someone wouldn't be able to do normally. Okay, the next mistake that you're probably making with your camera is you are shooting everything wide open. And what do I mean by that? You may have just bought a really fast lens, maybe a f1.8, f2.8, maybe an f1.4, and you're super excited and you just permanently set that lens to wide open. Don't do that. If you watch your favorite Hollywood movies or your TV shows, they rarely shoot wide open. Actually, most of the time they might be shooting at T3 or T4 and T is just a fancy way for cinema lenses to measure light, but it's equivalent to f-stop. So f4, f5.6, that's usually very, very common. And especially at really tight focal lengths or long focal lengths, they may be shooting at, I don't know, a 70 mil or a 200 mil, really far away. And that background may be blown out because they're only at f4. But if you really pay attention to your favorite movies or TV shows, there's not a lot of blur going on in the background. They really use that very selectively and wisely. Whenever you blur out the background, 
you are focusing the attention of your viewers on whatever subject it is that you're trying to focus their attention on. So if you overdo it and it's in every scene, your audience will get sick and tired because you're constantly telling them this is the most important thing, ignore everything else. Yes, it looks very cinematic and I love having that definition and having that creamy bouquet and separation, but use it very selectively because when you do, it's extremely powerful. The next one is ignoring manual focus. Autofocus is fantastic, it's amazing. My Sony a7S III does a fantastic job of locking onto my eye and I usually don't have to worry about it. But this is a talking head. Sometimes manual focus does the job and if you use it correctly, you can get a very, very cinematic look. Let me give you an example. I love doing this and I probably do it too much. I'll set my lens wide open. I'll switch over to manual focus and I will focus the camera to exactly the mark that I need my actor to hit. And then I'll have my actor walk into frame until he hits that mark. So he's blurred and then he's revealed to the audience. It's a very powerful shot. It looks very professional. I know you've seen it. A perfect example is American Gangster with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. It actually never made it into the movie, but in the trailer, you can see Denzel Washington's character walk up to the camera, pull the trigger, he drops his weapon, and then he exits. Well, they used manual focus where Denzel walks into the frame and he's revealed. Very powerful tool. Likewise for B-roll, on my other channel, my cooking channel, a lot of times I'm doing a how-to video, how to cook something. And it's a lot easier for me to just maybe go to an F5.6, get as much detail as possible, maybe a cutting board or something that I'm doing, and then lock on the subject, lock on to what I'm doing, and then switch on to manual focus, because I might be chopping something or things may be coming in or out of frame, and I don't want the autofocus to hunt for the subject. So use manual focus wisely, but you can use it very cinematically. On to the next one, ignoring picture profiles. Picture profiles are very, very powerful, but I know that they're also very, very intimidating. Don't be intimidated. Log two, log three, learn how to use it. You're gonna get the most dynamic range. And most importantly, when you go to edit and post, you have free range to do almost anything that you want. Color grade it any way that you want. Picture profiles, log picture profiles, D-log, Canon log, whatever. Learn how to use it. I'm shooting my talking head. I'm not using log three or anything like that, but I am using a unique picture profile, which is Sony's Cine Tone or S Cine Tone, and it works fantastic. It's not necessarily a log profile, but it gives me a little bit more dynamic range, and it works perfectly for the talking head. But if I'm shooting a film or short story, it's always some form of log profile. If it's the Sony camera, it's usually S Log 2 or S Log 3. If it's my DJI Ronin 4D, it's usually D Log. So, Make sure you give yourself that room. Don't be intimidated. And finally, it's shooting everything stationary. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a gimbal. Actually, it has nothing to do with a gimbal or not using a tripod. Use a tripod as much as you want. The number one mistake that I see beginners making all the time is they usually buy a zoom lens and then they shoot stationary and they just zoom the lens. Move your camera around. Keep it on a tripod, that's fine. But get unique angles. Move your body, move the camera, and get unique shots. Lower your tripod, maybe get a Dutch angle, but be creative. Stationary shots on a tripod are very powerful, but so are handheld shots. Pick up the camera, move around, mix it up a bit. Don't overdo it. A lot of times the stationary shot is more than enough, and you have to be very selective with your handheld shots. But mixing it up, just makes you look like a pro. Your footage just increases in value. And likewise, getting different perspective, different angles, think of unique shots. Visualize them in your head, something that someone has never seen before or from a different perspective or from your character's perspective that the audience wouldn't think of. Those are interesting shots. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative and I will catch you on the next one.